In this video, we are going to study about the histology of the appendages of the skin. The appendages of the skin include hair, nail, sebaceous gland and sweat gland. The mammary glands may be regarded as highly specialized appendages of the skin. So here we will see about the hair. The hair are present on the skin covering almost the whole body. The sites where hair are not present include palm, soles, the ventral surface and the sides of the digits and some parts of the male and female external genitalia. Differences in the length and the texture of the hair over different parts of the body and also there are differences in distribution of the hair in male and female. However, there are many areas that appear to be hairless, for example eyelids which have very fine hair and some of which may not even appear above the surface of the skin. In animals with a thick coat of hair where it is called as fur, it helps to keep the animal warm. In man, this function is performed by subcutaneous fat. The relative hairlessness of the human skin is an adaptation to make the skin a more effective sensory surface. The presence of short, sparsely distributed hair with a rich nerve supply to their roots increases the sens sensitivity of the skin. Next we will see the parts of the hair. Each hair consists of a part which is of variable length that is seen on the surface of the body. So this is the part which is seen on the surface of the body that is called as shaft. And you have a part which is anchored to the thickness of the skin. So this is called as the root. So you have a shaft which is a visible part and an embedded part that is called as the root. The root has an expanded lower end. So this is the lower end which is expanded and this is called as the bulb. The bulb is invaginated from below by the dermis. So this is called as the hair papilla. The root of each hair is surrounded by a tubular sheath which is called as the hair follicle. The follicle is made up of several layers of cells which are derived from the layers of the skin. The hair root are always attached to the skin obliquely. As a result, the emerging hair is also oblique and easily lie flat on the skin surface. Now we will see the structure of the hair shaft. The hair may be regarded as a modified part of the stratum corneum of the skin. It consists of three layers. First layer is the cuticle. The surface of the hair is covered by a thin membrane that is called as cuticle and this is formed by flattened cornified cells and each of these cells has a free edge which is directed distally and that overlaps the part of the next cell. Next is the cortex. It lies deep to the cuticle. The cortex is acellular and it is made up of keratin. The next layer is the medulla. An outer cortex and inner medulla can be made out in large hair. But there is no medulla in thin hair. In thick hair, the medulla consists of cornified cells of irregular shape. The cornified elements making up the hair contain melanin that is responsible for their color. Both in medulla and in the cortex of the hair, you have minute air bubbles and they influence its color. 
the amount of air present in the hair increases with age and along with the loss of pigment which is responsible for graying of hair next we'll see the structure of the hair follicle the hair follicle may be regarded as a part of the epidermis that has been invaginated into the dermis around the hair root so this is the hair root so around this you have different layers so that forms the hair follicle the wall of the follicle consists of three main layer so from the innermost layer you have the internal root sheath so this is the internal root sheath or inner root sheath which is present only in the lower part of the follicle it is present only in the lower part of the follicle then you have the external root sheath or outer root sheath which is continuous with the stratum spinosum and the outermost layer is the connective tissue sheath which is derived from the dermis so this is a picture of the schematic representation of hair follicle here you can see the connective tissue sheath which is present outermost layer and this is continuous with the dermis and then this is the outer root sheath and this is the inner root sheath the inner root sheath is again made up of three layers the innermost layer is the cuticle it lies against the cuticle of the hair so this is a cuticle of the hair and this is a cuticle of the inner root sheath so this is this consists of flattened cornified cells next you have one to three layers of flattened nucleated cells so this layer is called as the huxley's layer or stratum epithelial granulophorum here the cells contain large eosinophilic granules which are the trichohyaline granules the outermost layer is a made up of single layer of cubical cells with the flattened nuclei and this is called as henle's layer or stratum epithelial pallidum the next we'll see about the outer root sheath so this is the outer root sheath or external root sheath this is continuous with the stratum spinosum and this consists of living rounded and nucleated cells so when traced towards the lower end of the follicle the cells of this layer becomes continuous with the hair bulb the cells of the hair bulb also correspond to those of the stratum spinosum and constitute the germinative matrix these cells show great mitotic activity the cells produced here pass superficially and undergo keratinization to form the various layers of the hair sap and they also give rise to the cells of the inner root sheath the cells of the papilla are necessary for the proper growth in the germinative matrix the outer root sheath so this is the outer root sheath is separated from the connective tissue sheath by a basal lamina so this is the separating layer and this is called as the glassy membrane glassy membrane so this is strongly eosinophilic and pas positive next we'll see about the connective tissue layer the connective tissue sheath is made up of tissue that is continuous with the dermis this tissue is highly vascular and contains a numerous nerve fibers that form a basket like network around the lower end of the follicle present in close association with the hair follicle there are sebaceous gland so these are sebaceous gland and one such gland normally opens into the follicle near its upper end and next you have the erector pili muscle and this passes obliquely from the lower part of the hair follicle towards the junction of the epidermis and the dermis the region above the opening of the sebaceous duct so this is the sebaceous duct the region above the opening of the sebaceous duct is called as infundibulum 
இன்ஃபண்டிபுலம் த பார்ட் இன் பிட்வீன் த ஓப்பனிங் ஆஃப் த செபேஷஸ் லேண்ட் அண்ட் த அரெக்ட் எரெக்டர் பைலை மசில் அண்ட் திஸ் பார்ட் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் த இஸ்துமஸ் and the part of the follicle below the point of attachment of the erector pili muscle so this part is called as inferior segment next we'll see a clinical condition which is called as alopecia areata it is characterized by patchy or generalized hair loss on the scalp face or body occurring gradually over a period of weeks to months new patches of alopecia may appear while other resolve the patient does not experience any pain itching or burning physical examination reveals well circumscribed round to oval patches of hair loss the scalp appears normal without erythema scale scarring or atrophy next we'll see about the erector pili muscle these are bands of smooth muscle attached at one end to the dermis just below the dermal papilla so these are the dermal papilla it is attached below the dermal papilla above and at the other end to the connective tissue sheath of the hair follicle the erector pili muscle pass obliquely from the lower part of the hair follicle towards the junction of the epidermis and dermis it lies on the side of the hair follicle that forms an obtuse angle with the skin surface the sebaceous gland lie in the angle between the hair follicle and the erector pili muscle the contraction of the muscle has two effect first the hair follicle becomes almost vertical from its original oblique position relative to the skin surface simultaneously the skin surface overlying the attachment of the muscle becomes a depressed while the surrounding area become raised these reaction are seen during exposure to cold or during emotional excitement when the hair stand on end and the skin takes an appearance of goose flesh the second effect of contraction of erector pili muscle is that the sebaceous gland is pressed upon and its secretion are squeezed out into the hair follicle the erector pili muscle receive a sympathetic innervation